Hi there, and welcome to my garage, where I am coming to you. This is actually the place that I've been spending the most amount of time lately, not my photo studio. I've been um, out here a, a lot more, and there's a very important reason for that, which I will get into, but first of all, let me tell you what this video is about. This is kind of an impromptu video. Usually I put more effort into it. In fact, a lot of times I write scripts for my video. You probably, you probably know that I write scripts because um, it helps me stay on track. Not this time. The purpose of this video is one, I want to give something away again. I've been giving a lot of stuff away. I'm going to continue to give a lot of stuff away. Um, for those of you who don't know, we're running a contest right now. It's a photo and video contest called Do Good With Your Camera. So go to dogoodwithyourcamera.com to check out all the details on that contest. We're giving away almost $10,000 worth of stuff. Um, one of those being a Fuji X100V. Just a lot of really great stuff from a lot of awesome sponsors. So please check that out. You've got until December 31st, 2020 to, to compete. To compete? Not really. Because really all it takes is effort to, to join. Um, we're not going to choose the best photo or the best video to win all the awards, although there's a small component to that, but everyone has a chance to win. So anyway, check out those details. But in this video, we'll also be giving a, something away, a gimbal, more precisely, and we'll be, oops, if I don't break it, <laughs> I'm going to be giving away the, the Zhiyun Crane 2S, and we'll be talking about this a little bit here in a minute. Um, excited to give that away and to talk about it. So the purpose of this video though is to talk about four ways that I get stabilization um, in my b-roll run and gun style and what my favorite of those four ways is for the type of videos that I've been doing a lot lately. So that's the purpose of the video and the reason that I'm doing this video from the garage is because like I said I've been spending a ton of time here. Now let me tell you why, because I think it's, it gives a little bit of context into the type of B-roll that I'm doing. Um, there are chapter markers. Some people don't like me talking a lot, but guys, that's, that's what I do. That's why I have a channel. It helps me to vocalize. So I'm just going to talk and I'm not going to apologize and you can use the chapters or go find another channel and that's totally fine too. So why am I in the garage? It's because I practically have been living in the garage lately. This year, in 2020, we have been getting into mountain biking a lot as a family. We've been spending a lot of time in, on the trails. That includes everyone in our large family, everyone from the youngest all the way up to the oldest. Danae has been getting into it. All of us have been getting into it. And being the only bike mechanic in the family, <laughs> it has put a ton of pressure on me to keep. How many bikes do we have? We have Oh man, I don't even want to count. We have probably 11 bikes because some of my kids do different types, BMX, and one of them's into racing. I have a couple of bikes. There's just a lot of bikes happening in this place and keeping them up and running, that takes a lot of work. And um, I was taking bikes to shops all the time, spending all this money and getting back poor performance, just frustrated with... Um, the amount of times we were without bikes so that some of us couldn't go on a ride or whatnot. Anyway, I decided to build a shop and that's what I've done. This year I built a mountain biking shop. That's partially why my um, photography channel productivity has been a little bit low. It's because I've been building up a shop and, and learning everything to, to do my own work. And of course, because I don't do anything halfway, I've also decided to save money by restoring mountain bikes. And because, you know, that wasn't enough, I also started another channel, a new channel to showcase what I've been working on. So I have two videos on that channel. Guys, I would really appreciate it if you would head over to that channel, link above, below. It's called Build a Better Bike and subscribe. That would help boost that channel up and help help it to take off. I've got two videos there that I'm actually really happy with. One video, I, I did a whole build for Danae, built up a, an affordable bike for her, and I even showed the reaction of her at the end when I kind of surprised, well, she knew I was building it, but she hadn't, I didn't let her see it until the end. And then a Stranger Things inspired restoration bike. So those were fun and I've got more to come. So the contest, like I said, I'm kind of meandering all over, but it all come, it all come together in the end. The Zhiyun Crane, this is gonna go to one of you who heads over to one of the two videos I have on that channel 
and says, I've subscribed <laughs> on either of those videos in the comments. And if you do that, let me know that you've done that, then you will be entered to win the Zhiyun Crane 2S. So with those videos that I've been producing, I've really wanted the video to be a step above what you see in most kind of mountain biking channels. And sometimes there's no way around just sticking a camera on a tripod and pointing it at the thing you're working on, right? It's, there's no way around that because I don't have um, someone to video me all the time. But what I want to do also is be able to pick up that camera and move it in interesting ways to provide some B-roll. And to do that, I've experimented with four different methods. I'm going to tell you what I think of each of these, the pros and cons, and tell you which one has worked the best. Now, keep in mind the situation. I'm here in the shop. My primary goal is to service, to build, restore um, bikes. That means greasy hands, it means dust flying around, and it means that the camera, it's a, it takes a back seat. I need it to be able to be super agile so I can move it around quickly, I can pull it off the tripod and get the B-roll I need quickly, stick it back on. Um, and speed is a little bit of the essence. I mean, it already takes so long to do all of these things. Um, I need efficiency. And so B-roll in those circumstances, I found is difficult. You really have to focus on it if you want it to be good. And not that I'm succeeding quite yet, but part of um, my efforts have been to find out what works best. So the, the first thing, and I'll tell you some of these products, I'm going to, uh, actually three of these products, they've been sent to me through the years um, or, or months. And so in the spirit of disclosure, um, these products were sent to me. So that may bias me a bit, although I think what I have to say would apply to, to other types of products in that genre. So let's start with the gimbal. Um, and I've shot with many gimbals in the in the past, but when Zhiyun reached out and asked if I would want to look at this, um, I, I said yes in, in an instant because it had all of the things on it that have frustrated me about other gimbals. Um, one of those is that this thing can lock into place and not flop around everywhere. Um, you can lock all of these little, um, all the pivot points can be locked and then not go anywhere. And I love that, it's super nice. Um, this also, I'm just gonna kind of rapid fire some of the things I like about it. Um, this gimbal also has uh, a, a less fiddly way to mount the tripod than some in the past with the dovetail kind of, um, you know, the, the dovetail, what's it called? The, the little, uh, see, I, I should write a script that would make everything better, but I didn't. Um, tripod mount that's universal so this can mount in various places that's nice and helpful so that if I want I can pull it off of here and stick it on a tripod but the way that I use it um, you know you do have these little you know dealies that that's nice you can stick it on the ground but way, the way that I've been using it is not with not with this um, little tripod mount but putting on a a, uh, a bracket and sticking it on my tripod which is you know pretty low to the ground and that's been nice because then all I have to what I all I have to do is uh, in between takes with the gimbal the b-roll stuff I can yank it off of this tripod use it then just stick it right back on and then I can use the joystick on the gimbal to focus it where I need it to be, um, and, and that works pretty well. The, the thing that uh, I like about the Crane 2S um, are, are a couple things. One, the battery lasts forever. It lasts um, all day, and that's been great because I can you know, move it where I need it to be, fix it while it's on the tripod, and it will, you know, the motors will hold it in place and it doesn't seem to use a lot of battery. Um, and then I can pull it off and, and just keep it on all the time. I never turn it off and it lasts forever. But in those rare occasion, occasions where I forget to recharge it, um, I also love that I can charge it while it's, um, it has a USB um, C connection port right there. And I can charge it while I'm using it. And that is also 
excellent for the way that I use this thing. It, it does great. It works great. Um, my only complaint about it is that it's heavy, and maybe that's not a complaint because this is built hefty. It's built to also modular. It can be shifted into a uh, vertical orientation. Um, you can also remove, as I understand it, you can remove um, one of these brackets and lower it so that if you have a back mounted LCD like my X-T3 here, um, you can see it. I just, uh, the motors just aren't as, as strong that way, I guess, is what I understand. But I have no need to do that because I'm shooting on the X-T4 there and that's what I use as my primary video um, tool, which has the flip out screen and that flips out great on this gimbal. So it's a little heavy, um, but I think, you know, for more, um, for film shooters, video, videographers who use uh, larger cameras, that's going to work great for them. Um, just more than what I need. And so that's actually why I'm giving it away. Not because I'm dissatisfied with it. It's been incredible. I'm giving it away because it's too heavy. Um, and, you know, it was a gift. Um, and I like to pass those gifts on to you guys after I review things. Um, will I continue to use a gimbal? Uh, yeah, I, I will. I, I don't just use them in here for B-roll. Um, I'll just, you know, stick with something lighter like the, the Weeble. That's probably what I'll invest in. So that's that. Um, that's tool number one. Like I said, if you want to win this, do remember to go over to my other channel, build a better bike, leave a comment that you've subscribed. Subscribe first <laughs> and you'll be entered to win that. So that's one tool. The next tool, and I'm going to go, spoiler alert, I'm going to save the best, what I think is the best for the very last. The next one is really any slider type tool. Um, I've used sliders a lot. I have the Serp Genie um, stuff <laughs> in, the, in my office, and um, it's amazing for what it does. It's really cool. Problem with it, hard to set up. It takes too long to set up. There is no way that I could use that in this setting and get fast B-roll. So I have tried this one. This is the little Micro 2 by Zepon. That's like a weapon, but with a Z. They sent me this a year ago. And I like it, it's, it's pretty cool. A little nifty little um, push. Let's see if I don't, did I lock it? Oh no, I didn't. So you can just mount the camera and kind of push it along. Um, I don't have it set up right now, but I can stick it on a tripod and get, I don't know how much that is, like a couple feet of movement. And that can work really well. Um, and I've used this, uh, especially for photography B-roll. I'll stick this on, <laughs> I'll just stick it right on its little legs on my desk in my office and move it around and just get my B-roll with it. You have to kind of push it down so it doesn't move, um, but it works, it works great. Um, so link in the description for this guy. I don't necessarily recommend it in this environment though. Um, it's a little too fiddly to get where I need to and to get it set up. So that's where this comes in handy really nicely. This is like the ultimate freedom. And that's just a cage, a simple cage that gives you a little bit more um, points, of content, points of contact, first off, but further out laterally. The more lateral you are, uh, most videographers will tell you, the more control and the more stability you have for good B-roll. So um, I've got the X-T3 on this right now, but when I have the X-T4 on it, I've got the flip screen out here. I can manual focus, which is what I usually, which I like to do with B-roll, which is also one other reason why the, the gimbal isn't, it's not the perfect solution because it, it's too difficult to manual focus with the gimbal. You have to use continuous focus to really get, um, to, I mean, you pretty much have to. <laughs> or uh, fix focus, manual focus, and then just, you know, move your feet to, to get your focus. I'm rambling. The, in this, with this situation, I can manual focus and that's really nice. But I like this kind of freeform cage. This is a mix. I have a small rig handle, which I really like, but the cage is actually a really cheap one off Amazon that works great. It kind of encloses the device and then the small rig handle kind of puts it out to the side. I can get it close to my chest and then I get really stable uh, footage, especially with the X-T4, which also has built in stabilization. And it works great. This really is an awesome solution. Probably the most flexible um, and probably what I would use if I was always alone and I didn't need to 
how do I say it? It's, it works great. This is my second favorite solution. But let me tell you why it's not my favorite and what, what is my favorite. My favorite is down here. My favorite, my new favorite, because I've never really used them before, is a monopod. Now, there's nothing new and, and exciting about a monopod. They've been around forever. But this monopod is probably, um, well, I don't know, because I, <laughs> I have to be honest, I don't use monopods. But this is very impressive to me. I have used a few, and they were just kind of, dumb monopods that, that were basic, but this thing is fancy. It's got the feet on here as well as the rubber stopper. So you have a few different options of how to place this on the ground. It's got a pivot point here so that you can um, move and get really smooth footage laterally or forward and back um, to a degree, although you do start to get some, you know, some contouring if you go too far with that. Um, I have people, I have seen people slide these on the ground. That wouldn't work in here, but I've seen people use kind of sliding technique, um, with different feet. Um, I didn't tell you what this is called. This is the eye footage. And uh, those of you who've watched for a while know that I, that I'm a new fan of these guys for their tripods. Of course, this is the eye, uh, eye footage tripod here, which I also like. Um, this is the Gazelle TC. TC7 that they sent me a while ago. Um, great for landscape work, actually. Um, not necessarily a video tripod. I'm not sure why I'm using it as a video tripod as I do have others, but I, I just like it. It's a nice tripod. But this monopod, this is the Cobra 2 C182. Um, it looks like it's won some awards. I don't really know what the IF Design Awards or the Red Dot Award contests are, but sounds prestigious. <laughs> um, but, but it's great. Um, I like the head that came with this. I know it's sold separately, separately, I think. This is the Komodo K5 head. And this video head is beautiful. I love, it's so smooth, the movement. And it kind of has some rebound, some slow re rebound or resistance. So that, so you can really get that up and down, um, smooth movement. Um, yeah, there's a lot I like about this. The reason I feel like it's perfect in the application in here is because sometimes I have my kid help me. In fact, that's what this thing right here is. This is my, let me zoom into it so you can see. This is my son's bike that I'm building for him. He's doing a lot of work to try to earn that. And one of those things that he does is that he helps me video. This is a nine-year-old, 10-year-old kid, 10-year-old kid doing video work. And, um, yeah, this works great for him because I can plant it on the ground and he can get stable footage, be a little creative in his movement. Um, it doesn't have to be a static shot on a tripod and he can, this works great. But for me, it also works great because this does act as a tripod though, you have to be careful, easy to knock it over, but it will, like if I put it on this table right here, it's gonna, it's gonna stay where you put it generally. <laughs> like I said, it's a little risky. So, you know, it's take that into consideration, but I like that I can kind of plant it somewhere and then pick it up and use it for stable footage, um, whenever I need to. So that's been working great. It's be, it's become my favorite solution because to me it, it, uh, it hits the most applications. Um, there are really only a couple things that I wish, um, I wish I could change about it. One is that to loosen the pivot down here, you have to lift it up or bend down to loosen or tighten that, which I, I've been doing a lot because sometimes I want it loose, sometimes I want to tighten it. Um, I wish that there was a way I could do that, honestly, with my foot. Like just, I don't know what it would be. <laughs> or like a trigger, some sort of cable that comes up, although it would have to stretch with the height of it, but I'm not sure how you would do that. Something maybe for iFootage to consider. Um, that would be really cool. The other thing I kind of wish is that I wish that, that you could get options where these feet are a little bit longer, even get a little bit more stability with them, um, give you that much more added assurance that you're not going to topple your video device if you just leave it sitting somewhere. Um, I can't think really of anything else. It is cool that these release so quickly just by pulling. Um, so you can, you know, pull off that tripod head if you want, 
and mount it to something else. I don't have anything else to mount it to, but I assume they've got tripods that also have that, that sort of quick release thing, but you can also do that down here. And then, oh, well, I guess I sh should be obvious, but for those of you who are as slow as me, you can also do this. And then you've got, you know, then you've got your desk tripod. So that's pretty cool. But that's all I've got for you. A little bit of a scatterbrained <laughs> um, discussion on B-roll techniques. I uh, hope that you found it interesting or helpful. Um, I promise my other videos on my other channel are more interesting and we'll get back to more photography content very soon. I have some lenses that I'm excited to share with you. I will, uh, I'll tell you right now what they are. I've actually got one of the lenses right here. So spoiler, a little bit, not a spoiler, but a teaser, I guess. We have the Tokina 23-1-4 here. I'll be reviewing this as well as the 35-1-4. As soon as life um, allows me to get out and actually do photography. So I still haven't done very much with these, um, but I'm looking forward to telling you what I know about them very soon. So stay tuned to that for that. And in the meantime, like I said, a few ways to win some prizes. I hope that you'll take advantage of those. And until then, remember to do good with your cameras, and we'll talk to you again real soon.